Saints Chargers recap review. My God, ugly stuff, ladies and gentlemen. I had to drag myself in here to do this after watching three hours of just the most uninspired uh, football I've seen in a long, long time. Let's go through this. Okay, on the box score, and the game is nine seconds left in the game. Uh, on the box score, just atrocious from both teams on third down. Five for 28 combined, two for 16 from the Saints, three for 12 from the Chargers. Uh, neither team was really good in this game. The Chargers did enough, and by the Chargers, I really mean Lab McConkey did enough to, to extend the lead. And, you know, I mean, 26 to 8 looks pretty ugly. It was pretty ugly. The Saints were bad, but I wouldn't say the Chargers were great. Uh, if you look at first downs, 19 to 15, like I said, neither team was good on third down. Uh, 378 to 366 in total yards. Slight uh, win for the Chargers there. Game just went final. Yards per play, 5.9 to 5.4, pretty similar. Um, you know, rushing relatively in check as far as like the Saints defense. Held Dobbins to 17 carries and 57 yards. Uh, 4.2 yards on the ground for them. 122, Saints had 117. Good good day rushing, 5.6 yards a rush. Uh, a lot of penalties from the Saints. A lot of offensive penalties. One uh, right at the end there, right before Groupie missed his first field goal of the season. That was really important because we were trying to make it a one-possession game. And the uh, false start pushed us back. Missed the field goal. The rest is history. Time of possession, they win by... Uh, 31 minutes to 28, we'll call it 29 minutes, 30, 31 to 29. So, box score, you know, nothing really to take from this. Relatively even, uh, the Saints just shot themselves in the foot. You know, just Saints just never could kind of get out of their own way, never could really do enough. But at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. You know, like saying, oh, well, the box score said this, or oh, well, you know, because Saints are on a six-game losing streak. First time since 2005. Uh, this season is going nowhere fast. I mean, what is not happening anymore is playoffs, win the division, 10 wins, 9 wins, like all that stuff's out the window. All that stuff is totally, totally done. Any kind of thought about, you know, we, we're officially, you're officially in lost season mode. And we were already kind of there. We talked about it all last week. Uh, lead up to this game, but after losing this game, especially losing it in this fashion, twenty six to eight, I mean, just it, it's a it's a lost season. It, it is what it is. If you look at the box score here, Alvin ten carries on sixty seven yards with a beautiful twenty four yard uh, run. There, so Alvin was pretty good. Uh, Taysom four carries for twenty yards. Controversial box score. One of his receptions was given as a run. I guess it was a backward pass. I suppose Kendra ran. Well. It's funny because Kendra. He had three carries for 16 yards, and I was seeing a lot of tweets about, like, Kendra Miller, Saints got something in Kendra Miller, man. Kendra Miller is the real deal. And yeah, Kendra Miller goes out with an injury, and, like, this is his career. It's like three three carries for 16 yards looks pretty good. People are ready to say he's the next starting running back, and then he leaves with an injury. Uh, Receiving-wise, Alave got, got kind of banged up on the first reception, but he stayed in the game, played really well. Had one big drop, uh, one really important drop there on third down, but... Uh, 8 for 107 from Alave. It's good to see him get over 100 yards for the first time in the season. Alvin, a uh, ton of targets. 6 for 55. One really bad drop uh, from Alvin. Jawan got involved a little bit there, especially late. Switch from Hayner, or uh, Rattler to Hayner. I had a few people reach out and ask what I thought about the switch. I think it was necessary. I think Rattler was doing nothing. Um, he, he was not having a great game. No doubt about it. He was not He was not great. Um, you know, it, It's going to happen. We talked about it with Bo Nix and Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels, who are much higher touted rookies. Uh, they, you absolutely will have those games from a rookie quarterback where they just look bad. And uh, Rattler looked bad. He looked like he was seeing ghosts out there. Just did not have the rhythm. Did not have the tempo. Did not have the game in control. Uh, he was he was late on throws. He was misreading throws. He was uh, it was ugly. It was ugly. So to switch to Hainer was much needed. A little bit of a spark there when Hainer came in, but that spark quickly dwindled. Uh, nine for 17 from Hayner, 122. I mean, you know, nothing special there. And then on the Chargers side, like like I said, really really not a lot. I mean, not a lot from them either. You know, Her Herbert Herbert was good. 
Uh, he made a couple. I mean, it's aided with a 60 yard throw and a 45 yard throw. You know, like when you when you tack those on, like Herbert looks a little bit better than he was. Dobbins didn't do much. McConkey was really good, but it's just disappointing. It's just really disappointing. It's just hard to watch. Uh, it's miserable to go on a six game losing streak, but it's even more miserable whenever the product is just as bad and as listless as the Saints product is. And you know, I mean. It was good to see some people get back. I'm not sure why we didn't utilize Taysom more. I don't know if they were you know, trying to ease Taysom in or didn't want to lean on him too much, but it seemed like early on, it seemed like he was effective, and it seemed like we needed to utilize him a little bit more. I, I thought Kubiak was not doing Rattler really any favors. Like, look, you're two and five, right? Like, you're two and five. You're on the road. You're limited. I understand that. He's a rookie. I understand that. But at some point, you have to, you have to take the governor off and, and throw the football. And push the ball downfield, try and have some vertical, some verticality to the passing attack. And the Saints just didn't do that. It was just screen pass after screen pass after screen pass after screen pass. And that was it. You know, and at a certain point, like, you know, let, let Rattler, let him throw, you know, like, or if it would have been Hayner, like if Hayner starts this game, you're t again, you're two and five. Like, what are you, what are you being so conservative for? I understand if there's two minutes left in the Super Bowl and you're holding on to a, you know, eight point lead, nine point lead. Yeah, okay. At that point, who cares? Just be as conservative as, as possible, limit mistakes, and, and and do that kind of stuff. But in this in this game where the Chargers are also doing absolutely nothing, like you know, just at least go out on your sword. You know, like at least let him let the let Rattler throw it. I thought at times when we did get vertical, like the two minute drive. Uh, when we started getting Juwan Johnson involved in the middle of the field, when we started getting Alave involved in the middle of the field, I thought things looked good. You know, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if Kubiak just – I mean, it was not not my favorite game plan, I would say. I would not like to rewatch that game. Uh, but but it's just – it's like it's like we're hitting copy and paste on the last six – the six games. You know, like it's just ugly game in, game out. It's not fun to watch. It's not a fun product to watch. And I had a lot of people – you know, during the game, people tend to comment on videos and kind of like express, almost like use like a Twitter feed. And I saw a lot of people say like, I'm I, I'm not watching this team. I, I do not like watching this team. This team is not fun to watch. And I don't blame anybody. I don't blame anyone for after six weeks of this to say, yeah, I'm watching something else. Like I'm watching WCW Nitro reruns. I'm rewatching, you know, I'm, I'm playing Call of Duty I'm playing Black Ops 6. I'm doing something else with my time. I do not blame. The Pelicans played at 5. It was tough for me not to switch it to watch Pell's Blazers. I'll tell you that. And just, But the Saints did kind of keep it close until the very end when it was a complete, complete blow. And it was like a one-possession-ish game, you know, 10-point game, 11-point game. I was like, okay, hold on a second. Like, we're, we're, one, we're one away here. I mean, Groupie missed the field goal. That's pretty much all she wrote. But, you know, it is what it is. Um... I am on on like the, the the question that I'm sure is going to be asked is will Allen get fired? I mean I just don't think it will. Like, if you're going to fire Allen, fire him after the Broncos game. You know, there may be so much apathy now. Maybe they do something, but I doubt it. I, I doubt they do. I really I really doubt they do anything. I think they just kind of Carr comes back next week. We're on the road against Carolina. I know. Uh, Jay Cornegay opened up the line Saints minus seven. So it's a game that you know Saints should win. Not that it matters. Like I said, the season's kind of over. Like the season's over as far as aspirations. So whenever we're talking about like, you know, Saints should win. It's like, okay, sweet. That's one win closer to seven wins. It's one win closer to eight wins, you know. So if it was Madden, we would all be simulating to the offseason. We'd be simulating to the draft. I don't think I think the Saints will listen right now. I, I would say I don't think publicly they'll say this, but I I would assume the Saints are going to listen to anyone who wants to make a trade. I, I'm not sure exactly who would be that player. It's not Alvin. I'll go ahead and tell you that I don't think Alvin's going anywhere. I think they, I think that extension was just as much of a, a legacy signing as it was anything else. So Lattimore players like that potentially. You know, we'll see, but I would not be surprised at all if the Saints were, I don't want to say secretly, but if the Saints were uh, listening 
to offers from playoff teams because the Saints now, you know, again, they're not going to say this publicly. M- Mickey Loomis will not say this on his WWL radio spot he's going to do this week. But now, like any hope you had, because the plan was, his plan was you're two and five, you win this game, you go to three and five, you win next week, you're four and five. All of a sudden, like, okay, you put together some interesting stuff. You have a chance there. Tampa Bay last game of the season, you have Atlanta at home. You still got a chance to win nine games, ten games, and try and make something happen. That that that's over now. Like you had to win this game. You're you're way too you're way too up against it. So um you know, I think this was a last di- last ditch effort from Loomis and, and the gang of like if you can get this one, then maybe the season is kind of intact, but this is the first domino, as far as I'm concerned, towards the offseason, and an offseason that should and will uh, have Dennis Allen be fired and have some restructuring of this roster and some and some turnover and you know some some new some contract casualties, however you want to call it. Like I said, more than likely Derek Carr. Um, you know, so brutal, really brutal stuff, really brutal stuff. So it's not fun. It's not fun at all. And uh, tough to watch. Gross City, USA, population, Saints. We got a lot of season left. I mean, we got, like I said, Panthers next week, but then Falcons in the Dome, Browns in the Dome, Jameis Winston coming back for revenge. Uh, The Rams in the Dome, on the road to the Giants, Jane Daniels in the Dome, primetime, Packers two days before uh, Christmas. Then we get the Raiders in the Dome, and that's it. I'm going to wrap it up. So, we're gonna we're gonna be we're gonna keep pushing, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna keep pushing this season. We're gonna keep obviously making the content, doing what we do, be in the face of the franchise. It is hard times right now, but uh, like Razor Ramon said, you know, hard times don't last. Tough people do, or whatever it is, whatever the saying is. But man, ugly, ugly six games, ugly six games. I mean, 15 to 12, 26, 24, and then the wheels just fall off. Like these two games right here, definitely should have won one, if not both, Eagles and Falcons, but then Chiefs, Bucks, Broncos, Chargers. Like out of those four games, we were in a position, like we were playing well or in a position to win an incredibly small amount of times over the last month. Against the Chiefs, never. Against the Bucks, we were never really playing well. We were in a position to win at halftime. Broncos, not one second. Chargers, uh, I guess when it was two to nothing. But beyond that, really, really nothing. It's just uh it's just ugly. I mean, you know, at this point now, I mean again, it's kinda like the same with some of these other teams. You know, like when you watch when you watch some of these bad teams and you're wondering, like, why are y'all being so conservative? Like, why are y'all afraid to push the ball? Why are y'all afraid to do stuff? The team is, the season's over. Like you're, you're two and six. You're two and five. Like throw the ball. You know, like when when you watch the Panthers and it's just check down, check down, check down, check down, check down. It's like what's what's the harm in just letting it rip? What's the harm in in expanding the playbook and showing something, showing some creativity? But yeah, I mean every phase of the game was ugly today. Uh, Jermaine Jackson on punt return was some of the worst stuff I've ever seen. All he did was down. He he all he did was down the Chargers punts within the five for some reason worked really hard to do that and then didn't fair catch punts that he should have almost fumbled a couple it was just you know watching that and the d- defensively they were okay i mean defensively i'll say that i had a lot of you know this game it was a lot of like we'll see what this defense actually is we'll see if this defense actually is that bad uh i would say i would say no their their defense is not 32nd i think we we prove that you know like if you look at like i said jk dobbins had 3.4 yards of carry jk dobbins if you look at what he's done pretty obvious when he's good right can can you tell when jk dobbins is good i'll give you a hint when he's playing the raiders and when he's playing the panthers all right all these look pretty similar so i think the saints holding him to 3.4 uh at least tells you like okay the defense isn't the 32nd defense in the nfl now, again, does that really matter in the grand scheme of things? Probably not, right? It probably doesn't matter. So, you know, put, I guess, I guess a big thumbs up for, because uh, at this point in the season right now, we're sitting here saying 
hey, our defense isn't 32nd in the NFL. We'll chalk that up as a win. That's where we are right now. But, yeah, I mean, I feel, I feel, you know, I feel your pain. Like, I feel, I know people are frustrated and people are upset and should be. Like, fans should be upset. Fans should be upset, frustrated. Fans should not like watching this product. Fans should not like sitting there for six consecutive weeks and watching this on Sundays. Like, I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. No doubt about it. You know, so ugly stuff. Carr will be back against Carolina. Again, does that really matter? No. If if anything, it make it should make the offense more palatable. Do we win this game with Carr? Maybe. This was one of those games where I would argue probably because so little was happening in that first half. I think Rattler and Hayner were just, you know, I mean, not not even really Hayner. Hayner came in, you know, late. But I think Rattler was bad enough. You could argue like Carr could have taken advantage, but again, spilt milk or whatever. So. When Carr gets back, hopefully this team is a little more palatable to watch. Hopefully they're a little more fun to watch at least. But yeah, I mean, ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're playing for next season. Bottom line, they're gonna they're gonna. What we need to focus on now is just figuring out this offseason, figuring out okay, where are we gonna land in the draft? Which contracts do we move off of? Do we try and trade players right now, a la Lattimore, whoever we could trade to get some assets, and uh, we go there. But tough. Tough stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Brutal, brutal, brutal. Get on down in the comments below. Let me know what you think, what you thought about this, or anything else. If you don't want to talk about this game, wouldn't blame you. Get on down there. I will see you in the next video.